Alright, greetings and salutations. My name is Comic Fire, and welcome back for more Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga. Off screen, I did a ton of level grinding. For Surf, I got Megadola, Last Word, and Mind Charge, and Magic Repel. It's literally the only mantra he mastered. Meanwhile, Gale got a ton of buffing and debuffing skills. And Argilla is so full of physical skills that I really should just rename her to Pink Haired Heat. That's not funny, though. Here's the setup for Surf, which mostly just involves Last Word and Mind Charge. Bufudan no longer has boosts, as it's more of a utility skill. The only thing that really changed with Gale is they put Sukukaja for evasion-type stuff. Same for Argilla, along with Sakura Rage, so potential of charming. The mantra that it takes to uh, get the Mind Charge and Last Word skills, which are the only skills I really wanted from that, takes an extraordinarily long time to master. So I gave... They weren't even really junk mantras, they just... It just takes so long to master that one mantra that they got to master all those other little mantras. And I honestly thought I was going to have to restart the recording here, because this is what I was talking about with these demons being scary to fight. Also, mantras cost so much at this point that I figured I'm just going to leave Surf in the Dark Leader mantra, which is where I got it from, to deal with it. You can access the Dark Leader mantra by mastering any of the elemental lines, like the Fire God, Ice God, Wind God, probably Thunder God, or Electricity God, or whatever, and Mother Earth. As long as you can finish one of those, you're in the running to start Dark Leader. And it has Mind Charge, which is just so utterly perfect. And Last Word, which is the only single-hitting Almighty spell in the entire game, so it's useful for, uh... It's pretty useful, instead of just blowing, like, all the MP you can on uh, Megiddo Leon or something. And I also got Megadola, but I find the Megiddo spells aren't really worth the, uh... Aren't really worth the MP cost, even if Megiddo Leon does cost less than Last Word doesn't do as much. I'm sorry. I'll make this quick. Now here I like to show do I do it here? I guess I do. I think I just wanted to try out Sakura Rage. And last word. It's even scarier once you mind charge it. I try not to mess around with Titanians too much. Because I'm really not too sure about their elemental weaknesses and whatnot, because they seem to reflect everything I toss at them besides Earth. They haven't tried tossing electricity at them, so... Oh well. And let's get Fire Resist here. Now we can get rid of Ice Amp. I don't think I use Bufudine for the rest of this dungeon anyway. It really is just in case I run into something that I can't Agidine. Like I said, I prefer having Agidine because it comes out quicker. That's seriously the only reason I prefer it. The extra second I save by using it. Now these things are pretty scary too, because they're packing a uh, Psycho Rage. Yeah, Psycho Rage for a random encounter. And Ragnarok, which is the skill I mentioned last time, which is an almighty physical skill that hits every enemy, or party member in this case, and it comes equipped with a Rakunda effect. 
So it's pretty cool to have, but it's scary to get hit with. It's not like the second game where you have a physical skill that comes with debilitate attached to it. That's something fun. This is one of my least favorite puzzles in any Shin Megami Tensei game. Whoop. It's these walls that either drag you to the left, drag you to the right, or drag you down. It starts off slow here to teach you how they work. Oh yeah, lol, whoops, nope, down you go. Now this setup almost made me pee. Myself. In fear. That... I'm not gonna say it actually made me do, but no. Thank you, Fire Resist. Now Surf can take an Agidine better than anyone on the squad. Probably even better than Heat himself could take it at this level. Now I like this dungeon's level, well, I like this room's level design. It teaches you how these things work. And it's just nice using match down against Kotobo Pass, even though it should have just ran. Or not, I really don't want to mess with the idea of getting Gate of Hell. Like I was saying, like, this room teaches you how it's supposed to be used. You gotta think about which ones you're going through. Before it throws you into some really big stuff. Simple. Much unlike the rest of this dungeon. The rest of this dungeon makes me want to tear my hair out. Like I said, if you're going to mess with the Paws, try to set up an anti-death shield. Especially later in the dungeon where you can fight two of them at once. Because you don't want to get all the way to the end of the dungeon without saving because you got a little cocky. And then get... Get a held. That's the final mantra in this area. Or probably not, actually, since it looks to go a little farther. But 1.4 million maka. <laughs> 1 mil billion maka. Now, if I was looking to go straight for the final boss, this setup would be more than enough. It's more than I had the first time I fought the final boss, and I had an easy enough time with the final boss. Easy enough. I mean, it was still a little challenging, but could have been worse, I suppose. Now, the cool thing about this dungeon's music is it evolves. The higher up you go, the more serious it sounds, I suppose. Started out with just the gentle plucking, and now we're getting the palm muting metal stuff, yo.
Alright, so I hope you learned from, uh... Your previous experiences with this, because this is where they expect you to have suddenly mastered it. Yes, the exit door was right there, but you have to work your way up. And there's a lot more warps. That's what the majority of this dungeon is. Working your way up through BS backtracking puzzles. I almost wanted to just, you know, fast forward through this whole thing, but I feel like that wouldn't adequately express my frustration with it. I'm sorry. I'll make this quick. Because without this whole backtracking thing of Medoodle, this probably would be one of the shorter dungeons. And this is honestly a reason why I don't really want to play Nocturne, because from what I've seen, it looks, or from what I've heard, I should say, it looks like a lot of the dungeons in Nocturne are like this. Whee! So probably going back to Nocturne from this would be a lot like going from a uh, like Generation 2 of Pokemon to Generation 1 of Pokemon. A little tougher, not necessarily more fun. I don't know what I was doing there. See, I really try to avoid fighting Ganesha's as much as I can those elephant things are. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, because I'm sure I'm not. Generally, if it goes down, you're probably going the wrong way, and a warp nearby is going to send you tumbling down. Now, there's, a there's an ability you can pick up called First Strike. What does it let you do? It always lets you get a First Strike, right? No. It doesn't. I'm not sure if it's like Final Fantasy 1 where it's actually a broken skill like most of the skills were in that game. I have no idea why I was just using Last Word so much here. I don't know if it was a legitimately broken skill, but you have as much opportunity to get a uh, ambushed as possible. I don't know what I was thinking there. But hey, I don't actually mind that we did it because we get magic noise. Yeah, that was more than a little infuriating. Now, all the noises we had amassed up to this point I used off-screen, and I used them on Argilla. Mostly because I'm just trying to make Argilla my... Well, Surf's my killer, Argilla's my definitely my second-in-command. Screw it. And Gale's just a frail little thing, because he's totally just my support demon. And come the final boss, I'm going to definitely make his moveset more accurate, accurately reflect that. I just wanted some Amped Zandines and Zeodines, just in case. Because buffing skills don't really have a place in random battles. <laughs> Yep, not even screwing with that.
I don't know, I had so many save points at this point, because... Every time I save during an episode, I try to put it in a new spot just in case something goes wrong and I have to re-record the episode. It was about at this point I started uh, pre-recording episodes long in advance, because now I didn't have to worry about commentating at the same time, so I could start recording at like the middle of the night if I wanted to, or if I was just bored and wanted to start moving. I already forgot where I was going with that. Where was I going with that? Oh. Well. I really have no idea what I was trying to say there. I don't know how I forgot so easily. But I pre-record. And do a lot of- oh yeah, save points, duh. Pre-recording. So I'm starting to lose track of what save points I did just in case I had to re-record something like three episodes prior and then probably have to scrap a bunch of recordings midway. So, they got kind of confusing. I don't know what I can get rid of and what I can't get rid of. Thank you for not being transformed. I think my first time in this dungeon, it must have taken me significantly longer than it takes here. Because while this recording was kind of frustrating, because at towards the end I'm just like, let it be over, it started feeling like Horologium from Strange Journey. My first time I remember being infinitely more frustrated and angry. Just try to go to new places and new places, and you keep getting in random battle upon random battle. You don't want to fight them, and you forgot to buy a Stoma Spray, and there's no vendor anywhere near here come too far to just go back to the vendor. I keep getting lower and lower and I keep forgetting where I am. Then I just get dropped back into somewhere I already know where I am so now I have no leads so I have to walk back to where I think a lead might be. Getting in more and more random battles upon random battles and it just crushes you. That's why I think this dungeon is either masterfully done, or horrendously done. If the idea was to make you try to doubt yourself so you'll just give up and stay in Nirvana, uh, not Nirvana, the junkyard forever, then yes, it's masterfully designed. Otherwise, this is just a very annoyingly built dungeon. And I have no idea why these rooms would need to be built if Sarah hadn't put those droppy things everywhere. And the path through this dungeon, at least this part of the dungeon, is actually very straightforward. I just... You get lost, and you lose yourself, you know? Get scared to get misplaced. But at least you're still you. Honestly, if I could just go through the game with... Surf and Argilla and have and still have three icons somehow. I'd do it. I don't really need anyone else. I just like having Gale around because he's voiced by Steve Bloom. Another safe spot. Could have taken advantage of it, but nah, I like living on the edge.
Remember in a previous episode where I said I like to uh, go all the way to the end because the exit or a cool item tends to be there? Well, it's not always true. Dismutes are nice. I would have preferred something like, uh, like a Soma or a Soma Drop, but, you know, you take what you get. I think I wanted to save and then stopped halfway, and... I don't know, it's hard to tell what I'm thinking in post-recording. things to remind me. People are wondering if I'm going to do the second game. I've been thinking more and more about that now that Vegas has made it infinitely easier for recording and whatnot to work. And now that I know post-commentary is definitely the way to be doing these sorts of things. I might might do too now. Before it was a definite hell no, now it's just a maybe now. Please don't take this, please. I felt so crushed. Back to square one. A controller was not thrown, but angry words were shouted. Just one of the more soul-crushing experiences. Fortunately, this time I go through pr relatively quickly, a lot quicker than before. And I did contemplate just cutting out that whole first part and then leaving this is the way to go, but what would be the fun in that? You gotta know what this dungeon is like. Experience the bullshittery. And the psycho rage. Fortunately, it could have been much, much worse. I wonder why they called it Rage and Psycho Rage in this game, because in other Shin Megami Tensei titles like the main line and uh, Devil Survivor, going, like, the thing to give you more icons or whatnot, to get you two instead of Rage, it's Beast Eye, and to get you three instead of Psycho Rage, it's, uh... Actually, Psycho Rage gives you four. I don't know if Dragon Eye gives you four in the other ones. I think it only gives you three. But I was messing around with a code breaker for uh, the second game, and I think I might do this for this one too. But you can't usually get Rage or Psycho Rage, but the, if you use a code to get all the uh, skills and whatnot, a lot of uh, demon exclusive skills show up, including uh, things that are just like code, like 0x17 or something, which have like descriptions for other skills that you can already have or other boss exclusive skills, but Rage and Psycho Rage show up. I wanted to try using them, but I was positive it was going to freeze or glitch my game. So I didn't mess around with it too much. Theoretically, if you could, though, you would never have to uh, be afraid of any kind of bosses. Because I do believe the rages only take 1 MP. At least that's how it was in uh, 
That's how it was for Moth and, uh, well, demons in general in, uh, Nocturne. So for just the cost of 1 MP, you could... 1 MP per use, that is. You could potentially give yourself infinite amounts of press turns. Or not infinite, you'd have to max out at, uh... So you get four glowing icons for 1 MP or so. Max out at 99 MP, you're, uh... 3,996 press turn icons. And that's how you get through. Now, in Shin Megami Tensei 4, if you defeat the uh, Ultra Ultra Super Boss, you get a skill called Guardian's Eye, which for 255 MP, you can get uh, three flashing icons. But at, after you've beaten the ultimate super boss, there's really nothing to use it on, so... Alright, now we have disappearing, reappearing walls. I guess that's not really the right term for it, because it's not like the blocks in Mega Man where they show up and disappear. I guess they're just like fake walls. Like, yeah, it looks open. Whoops, I'm solid. Or, look, I'm solid. <laughs> Whoops, I'm not actually. Those are a little more annoying to catch, but generally, if you've reached a dead end, you probably uh, are close to an invisible wall. Nice. Now, I'm running away from all the battles to conserve MP for when if I really needed. Except in this case, apparently. Or if I really need the MP. Or if I just don't want to screw around. Because I have all the levels I need, so fighting's useless for me. Final room at the Karma Temple is Karma Temple L. So we still have a ways to go because we still have G, H, I, J, and K to get through. Like, we're not even halfway through this recording session yet. Now, I'm glad this isn't like Nocturne, where things with Rage or Psycho Rage just keep using it, like the boss Mott in Nocturne. Where if you simply look up Nocturne Mott or Mott Nocturne, it shows the first thing is just some dude getting wiped over and over again by Nocturne just spamming Beast Eye over and over to get a ton of press turns, boosting himself up with Makakaja and then using Megiddo Leon to wipe his team. It's especially worse because he was on a low level run. Now I'm surprised this worked twice. Because it's the same way you got through the first invisible wall setup. The only thing that could stump you is the fact that it's solid wall there. But really, you have to test every wall of the dungeon from now on. It gets even worse when they start combining the uh, invisible walls with the slidey floors. Or whatever we want to call the little warp tile things.
Now there are four large karma terminals in the Kar uh, karma temple. I only found three, one, two, and four, and I'll find four later. I have no idea what the third is, but it's probably hidden behind like a red wall or something. So I still don't have the red key. Well, at this point in the game, I don't even have the yellow key. Yeah, much easier than you thought it'd be, huh? The only thing in our way were a couple of, uh... These aren't Haridis. I think these are Parvati's. Yeah, Haridis are the, uh, ones wrapped in a shawl. Up, oh, invisible. Nope. <laughs> These are the Ongyo keys I was talking about. These things are really rare, but they're one of the few demons that drop power sources. Here's where I try to confirm if they were gun weak, but... I missed. Not at the end yet. We still got a ways to go. But for right now... Well, after this battle, I suppose. I'm going to end the episode right here. See you guys next time.